Hi there. Let's look at masks in dance in West and Central Africa. There are numerous traditions we can talk about. I'm going to pick out a few which I think are really characteristic of some of the broader qualities of masks in Africa and really start to look at the way in which masks function. When we think about African art, masks are one of these sort of powerful images we have of the way art works in African art. And it's a very important way to think about the role of the mask, not as a kind of isolated thing, that it's about this mask, but the mask is integrated with a costume and a dance and a song and uh, all kinds of other oral traditions, stories, and ideas that have been passed down and sort of integrated. The mask is, is just one part of this whole constellation of ideas that are surrounding the expression and the character embodied in the mask itself. So to begin with, we're going to look at two cultures, uh, the Pende and the Mende. As uh, the Pende are sort of in the southern part of Zaire, and Mende are in uh, part of Liberia and further to the north. We'll start with the Pende. And there are a number of different Pende cultures. And the ones that we're talking specifically about are sort of called the Western Pende in a matrilineal society. Now, a matrilineal society is, of course, very different than uh, what we have and uh, are familiar with in the United States as a patrilineal society, which means that commonly when someone is born, they adopt the name of the father. In a matrilineal society, a person adopts the, the name and is recognized to be a part of the genealogical family of the mother. Uh, there are a lot of other things that happen in matrilineal societies. We don't really need to get into all that, but that's sort of the, <clears throat> the basic uh, component. Another interesting feature of Pende culture is that the role uncles play in rearing children. So your mother's brother will play a very important role in rearing you and provide for the education, major expenses, and really be your sort of um, the sort of person who will look after you and make sure that the persons are, are there to um, be reared and cared for. So uncles have control over their sister's progeny. So older generations feel neglected. Uh, there's supposed to be this reverence for age and the younger generation can feel uh, also uh, abused and taken advantage of as they're supposed to do and act in the service of this older generation. Another really interesting feature of Pende society is this idea of wanga. That is a kind of power or force that is sort of manifest in the way uh, things happen. And certain people possess more of this ability to make things happen. Uh, they can be there and everything seems to go their way. They, they have a kind of charisma, charm, whatever it is that allows people to gravitate to them and they're able to mobilize and get things done. And this can be a good force or it can be a force for evil. And so wanga is just this thing that is, for people who are ambitious, a very important part of what you can do. And there's certain ways that you can use your wanga, unless, especially if somebody is, is taking advantage of you. And so this is where fears of black magic come in and other kinds of ideas, that are tensions within the society. The first mask I want to talk about is a very important uh, mask as it represents the idea of the ancestor. It's called the Giwoyo mask. The masquerades in the Giwoyo uh, provide an opportunity for the youth who perform to demonstrate skill, prowess, charm, wanga, as you were, the ability to kind of bring together all the qualities that uh, show that a person has these, these extraordinary attributes. 
And so dancing a mask is a way of kind of showing the broader society your own charms, your ability to embody and communicate effectively these dance performances. So um, these are done during festivals, celebrate the community along with associated with the harvest. And the Giwoyo mask is usually performed at sunset and it's a part of a kind of procession of the ancestors sort of returning to the village. Giwoyos usually have these very, very long chins, as you see in this mask here. And you notice a, a, a line of holes along the chin that would be inserted with a kind of raffia. And the raffia is a, a fiber that uh, gives it a kind of beard-like quality. Uh, much of the costume and much of the other parts of what is worn is made out of this raffia. A very important part of the Giwoyo mask and part of any dance performance among the Pende uh, is not even so much the character of the mask, but the rattles that are on the ankles. These see a photograph here on the left. Um, these are tightly wrapped around the ankles, and so as the dancer is moving and stepping, uh, they're making a sound that is exciting and energetic and calls people's attention. And dancers have been known to say, well, you know, uh, they will buy the most expensive foot rattles that they can afford, and then the mask really comes second. So that it's very important, the sound and the movement and the song uh, are really the central part of the dancer's focus. And the mask is, is, is next of importance, and, and that a person who can really gain in popularity by demonstrating their ability to uh, do the dance effectively. The way they talk about the giwoyo, here is another giwoyo that is actually got a very short beard, but here it has the raffia fringe on it, so you can kind of see it. It also has this sort of ridged crown on the top that uh, covers the top of the head. But you notice the face uh, has a kind of youthful appearance, and that's a very interesting sort of counterpoint between the idea of the being a kind of ancestor mask, a mask that reveals the idea of someone coming from the beyond. So it is a bridge between the visible and the invisible, the sacred and the profane, the living and the dead, the traditional and the new. And so this idea of the youth and also the idea of the ancestor, this is a kind of a, a tension. There's ways in which, how does that sort of manifest itself in, in the Pende society? <clears throat> so the masks are not meant to represent or affirm standard, ordinary roles. They're often created in a way to sort of provoke uh, tensions and excite emotions um, that exist in the society. A really good example of this is the Fumbu mask from the Pende. And the Fumbu is the executioner mask. And it usually has this very sort of protruding forehead steep brow, a scowling face, sharp teeth. And um, this is sort of, a, you, once you start to recognize the characteristic, these deeply lidded eyes, which are so characteristic of the Pende, the kind of broad, flat nose with the jutting cheekbones, that's sort of the, and the, the singular brow. These are all characteristics of the sort of classic Pende. But you can also start to see how uh, certain features are accentuated and certain shapes uh, dominate to create these very distinctive mask uh, styles. This here, the Fumbu mask, has these sort of three-part crown that goes upward, jets upward above the mask. And the executioner, of course, is a royal executioner, a person who's commanded to kill people, <clears throat> people who are being punished uh, for their crimes. And so... This, this kind of threat, this kind of danger, you, an executioner as a person, of course, is acting uh, lawfully, of course, under the, the, the commands of the king or ruler, but it's also a very scary, terrifying character, a person who also represents the threat of violence um, of, of royal decree. So the executioner is a kind of uh, intimidating and, and threatening character. Another very interesting sort of threatening and intimidating character is actually this female character here, 
the gabanda. The gabanda mask, you notice how the, the brow is not as pronounced. The mouth is smaller. The eyes are heavily lidded. The lidded eyes, <clears throat> excuse me, suggests the idea of coolness, calm, collected, a kind of inner force, an inner possession of power, of wanga. And in the Gambanda, you're representing this female character, and the female character is a prostitute, <clears throat> a woman who is uh, free to solicit sex from men. And so she is a kind of dangerous seductress, a person who uh, sort of lives outside the norms of society. There's also a kind of virtuous young man mask you can see over on the right side here. Uh, this, you can see the, the deeper scarification on the cheeks, this kind of jutting mouth that's coming out, and this sort of larger flattened nose and um, incised brow. So this is the gambanda, and the counterpoint to that I'm showing you here also is the young man's mask. Another really fascinating mask, uh, maybe you've, you've seen something like this before, the Mbangu mask with this mouth that's sort of twisted um, in a vertical way and the whole face is sort of asymmetrically lopsided at the bottom, kind of twisting uh, in a kind of painful grimace. Um, again, we have the calm, lidded eyes, but the lower part of the face has this tension. And then there's this very striking way in which part of the face is white, part of the face is black. The Mbangu mask represents someone who's fallen into the fire, a person who's had something like an epileptic seizure. And this person is usually believed to have been cursed by black magic. And so the song here, Dimbanda Munu Mbangu, we look on unable to help, the sorcerers have bewitched him. So here's a person who is a victim of black magic. And this sort of way in which their face is twisted and writhing, uh, and, and yet that sort of the lidded eyes and the delicate brow suggest that this is an innocent person. This is a nice person who has been, uh, unfortunately, uh, been um, maliciously attacked by black magic. Here we can see, just see uh, an example of the Mbangu mask being worn in a costume. And in this case here, uh, the Mbangu mask uh, is worn with a, a big hump on his back. And in that hump is a black arrow representing the curse that is afflicting the Mbangu. And the Mbangu here is kind of lurching around, begging for mercy. And there's a sort of clown character here who's taunting and teasing him. The clown character is a, a sort of counterpoint to the character. And they're there to sort of elicit uh, and excite even more emotion. They usually are kind of anti-role models, whereas the Mbangu is there to elicit sympathy. The clown character is there to abuse and make fun of and taunt um, this afflicted character. Here's another example of the Mbangu. You can see the black arrow piercing the hump on his back. Now, these are all traditional masks and, uh, of the Pende, and these different characters are all performed depending on the performer who's got the idea how they want to uh, elicit excitement and interest in an audience that might be gathered for a festival celebration. A new mask was created in the 1980s by Gampiteshi Kivule, who was a Pende who had gone off to the city, like a lot of them have now. And he's come back, and so he's got this kind of new urban sensibility. He's questioning the traditional values and ideas. And he wants to create a kind of dance and mask and a new story to sort of capture this, this new modern world that's happening all around them. And so he creates this song. And the way he gets the idea for this new mask really comes from an incident where he was, as a young man, climbing up a tree to get mangoes. And an old woman walking by down below uh, saw that he was up in the tree getting mangoes and said, 
asked for him to, to throw down a few mangoes for her, which he obliged. And of course, now mango trees are huge and the branches are very, very high and the, the fruits dangle in, in a very dangerous way. So he's kind of risking life and limb to get out there to grab the mangoes. And so he goes about collecting his own mangoes. And he, again, another old woman comes by and demands from him uh, some, some mangoes. And he looks at her and he says, you and me, which generation? And by this statement, he means, are you like my girlfriend that I want to flatter you? And in this case here, she thinks this is hysterical. And uh, he realizes at that moment, he has this really interesting line. Me and you, which generation? Gidongo gi tishi. And he's a part of this song that he then thinks about. The phrase is kind of running through his mind. He starts thinking about a rhythm that might go with this and action and gestures. And this idea, he's sort of pointing me and you, which generation? So he's sort of comparing the, him to this other, other generation. So at this time, he, he goes and he, he creates his first mask, which is basically a gourd that he carved out. And he bought really nice dance beats and he's got a song. And this catches on and becomes a huge hit. And then once he's made some money, people have given him money for doing his song and and dance, uh, he goes to a mask carver and he has them has the mask carver uh, make a mask for him. And he says he doesn't want a traditional young man's mask. He wants something softer, rounded, more naturalistic, and the hairstyle to be more hip, like somebody from the city might wear. And so that's why he has this, he associated the idea of a more naturalistic, more realistic mask as re representing a kind of more modern idea of a dance. And so Gambetti Shikivule became very famous for his very distinctive mask and dance and song. And here he is uh, showing his dance. And you see how his mask is, is much more naturalistic than a traditional young man's mask I've shown you already here. It has a much softer, smaller nose. It still doesn't have the same kind of heavily lidded eyes. The eyes are a little bit more open. It's got a kind of tall forehead. And so he dances around. He was a very gifted dancer. And so people really enjoyed watching him move. And then he would do this gesture here where you see he's holding his hand out. He's pointing at you and then he flips it back to himself. He says, you and me, which generation? So are you like my girlfriend that I want to flatter you, you old people? Do we really have to give you everything we have all the time? Well, that was the original idea of the song. And as he grew in popularity, other people imitated his dance. And what's really interesting about this new creation is even though the song was carried on and the dance was carried on, other dancers who copied his dance tradition that he created did not make a modern mask. They reverted back to a more conventional young man's face. And so it's interesting how the, the, the thing that we latch on to, this very novel and new and original looking mask, was actually discarded. And even though this remains a very important part of his ability to create a new mask, it's part of uh, the tradition that's carrying on now is kind of reverting back to a more conservative idea of what a young man's representation should be. Another very important dance tradition I want to talk about in the Mende Society. Mende are uh, uh, the Sunday society within the Mende people is a woman's group. It is a part of an initiation, young women who are growing up and need to be initiated into the rights of being an adult woman who can care for children. Uh, so there's a part of engaging them and going through these initiation rites. This is the only mask in Africa that is worn by a woman. It's made by a man, it's, but it is consecrated, it is kept, and worn only by women. 
So these masks are called Nuwu or Sowe masks. And you see they have uh, the face of a idealized face of a woman, uh, small eyes, nose and mouth, small ears, a very tall forehead, and then these sort of rings that go around down to the neck. And this is a helmet mask, so it rests all over much of the, of the head and then sort of cascading down from the, the bottom edge, again, are the sort of raffia, hiding and masking the entire body, um, as you see in, in the dance form here. The Sande Society plays a very important role in the sort of the rites of passage of young girls. And you see the young girls here engaged in the dance. And there's, they're in the part of, we talked, remember, about the age grades. These are uh, young girls who are part of a common age grade. And here they are um, performing this dance, which is a part of their kind of bonding, part of their uh, sort of unification as a group and thinking of themselves as a kind of cohesive group that is supporting each other. This is a part, an important function of the Sunday society. And this, uh, this mask represents sort of the ideal of womanhood that they are to aspire toward. So let's take a look at this Nowo Sowe mask. And the Nowo mask you see here uh, they tend to have this kind of tall forehead and very elegant coughed hair. So the, the upper part is the where the greatest amount of sort of innovation takes place. Each of uh, the hairstyles has as many of the sort of features and characteristics of, uh, of the tokens and, and symbols of the Sunday society. They all have this very small eyes, nose, and mouth. The idea of listening is important. The idea of modesty. And the tall forehead is this idea of beauty, this sort of shiny blackness, supposed to be like deep fertility, um, shiny blackness, smooth and elegant. And the rings around that form the neck, some people have said that this is like rings of fat. That means that you're super healthy and that you are very fertile. It also suggests this idea of rippling water, this idea of a kind of movement of, of something emerging out of a deep pool of water. And the kind of shiny blackness is, again, a reflection of this idea of a deep pool of water, a symbol of fertility. There's also another idea in the design of the mask, this idea of the, the, the rippling under part is like a chrysalis. It's like this sort of emerging out of the chrysalis, the sort of, this is the form, the emergent form of the young woman. She's coming into being, coming into her full womanhood. A very interesting counterpoint to these masks is that they're often danced with a gonde mask. And I've not seen a lot of examples of this, but in this case here, the mouth tends to be much more pronounced, sharp teeth. They tend to be a kind of comical or absurd, and they are kind of anti-role model. And they sort of here to sort of um, accentuate and dramatically highlight the virtuous uh, mask of the Sowe.